Thank you, Josh. Good afternoon, everyone. Everyone here and all out on the internet. It's good to have you with us. Well, today I'm going to talk about the narrow gate. The narrow gate. And we start out with a scripture, Matthew, the seventh chapter. Uh, it talks about the narrow gate. And also the wide gate. Matthew 7th chapter 13th verse says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many, uh, and there are many who go in by it. <clears throat> uh, because the narrow gate is the gate, and, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. This verse reminds me of when I was driving back from Grand Rapids this last Tuesday. The wind was blowing hard. It was treacherous, really. I had to keep both hands on the wheel to keep the wind from pushing me over into the oncoming traffic. <coughs> You know, that's a lot like Satan trying to push us into the path of destruction. First Peter tells us what to be to watch for. It tells us about Satan in First Peter the fifth chapter. First Peter five eight is one of my favorite verses. It says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's, Satan's got his own followers right now. He isn't after them, the sinners, the evildoers. He's after the Christians. And he wants to, he's waiting, he's trying to push us into a path of destruction. There are multitudes and many, many multitudes that believe that once saved, always saved. But some time ago I was listening to a radio station <clears throat> when I was on my travels and it happened to be a, a minister uh, narrating a question and answer show. And this uh, one caller called in and says, Is it true that once saved, always saved? And the minister answered and said, Yes, that is definitely true. And he went on to say, If you sin after being saved, then you were not really saved in the first place. Well, that's not so. Evidently, he, that minister doesn't read the, read the Bible. <clears throat> and because if he did, he would have answered that question correctly. Second Thessalonians tells us about that, about uh, not being saved once you're saved because there are people that fall back. And uh, Th Second Thessalonians is second chapter. Uh, it says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our gathering together, oh, I started with the first verse, really, I think it is, yes. Uh, I'll read it again. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, uh, we ask you uh, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Right there, right in the Bible, it says falling away. But falling away from what? Falling away from being saved. That's what it's falling away from. 
I believe many worldly ministers preach and teach what they uh, what will make the people feel good, and uh, they pre they don't preach the whole Bible. They don't preach all the scriptures. God's inspired word, the Bible, is really remarkable if you read it all. Uh, First, you don't have to read, turn here, but First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, twenty verse, verse says what we all know. It says, "Prove all things, prove all things, and hold fast what is good." Jesus died to save sinners, so they have the opportunity to have everlasting life. He didn't die so they could just say. I believe in Jesus and they just go on their sinful ways after that and then the old man living the old man life so to speak <clears throat> only through God's grace that he gave his only begotten son for our sins grace is unmerited pardon it's undeserved it's unearned forgiveness but if we sin willfully after having received the knowledge of the truth there's no longer there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins that's a Hebrew 1026 but no longer remains a sacrifice for sins that means if we willingly sin after being saved uh, Jesus died for nothing if that's the case living on the narrow path is difficult because we have to ward off the evil evils of this world Satan's world Romans the 12th chapter I was going to read a couple verses of that but I decided it's such a wonderful chapter I'm going to read the whole thing uh, Romans 12 says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service um, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice <clears throat> sacrifice what we sacrifice some of the things that we like to do in our old life but we don't do them anymore. So we sacrifice those. They're gone. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transferred by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly, than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are uh, one body in Christ and individual members of one another. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion of our faith. <clears throat> excuse me. If ministry, <coughs> excuse me. If ministry, let us use it in our ministering. Uh, he who teaches in teaching, who he he who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality, and he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor that uh, what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate one another with brotherly love, in honor, uh, giving preference to one another not lagging in diligence, uh, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope,
patience and tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be the same uh, mind towards one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Now that not, is not always possible. It depends on how fierce they come at you or how much uh, a deep enemy they are. But we tr sure try to live peacefully with all men. That's the righteous way to go. Verse 19, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, uh, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. So in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I like that verse. That's wonderful. Well, I, I go on to uh, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Here it tells us our relationship with God and wh what we are. 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter 16th verse says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the uh, temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Ephesians, the 6th chapter uh, it tells us how to be prepared to stand against the evils of this world. Ephesians 6, 11th verse says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore and having girded your waist <coughs> excuse me, with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with you, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That last one, Take on the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always uh, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with the perseverance and supplication for all the saints. I'd like to conclude with a verse in, for, in uh, James, the first chapter. It's a good verse. This is one I like very much also. James 1, the 12th verse, said, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him.